My friends, it is all about comfort food in the form of slow braised beef stew topped with cheddar dumplings. This is an incredibly easy meal to pull together, particularly when the days are a bit colder, it's darker and you need some comfort. We're gonna brown our beef until it's nice and sizzling and gold and we're gonna get in there with carrots and onions and garlic and build the aromatics. Then the oven is gonna do the rest of the work, slowly braising the beef until it's almost falling apart. While that's happening, we're gonna make up some really easy cheddar dumplings that come together so beautifully with plenty of butter, lots of cheese, and really great aromatics in the form of parsley. This is one you're gonna to wanna to make all through winter. And to start off, we're gonna season up our beef with a little bit of flour and some sea salt and black pepper. Now take your time with this step. It's one that is important to a stew like this because you're gonna get a lovely crust from that flour. The seasoning's important and it's just giving you that moment to give a little bit of love to the meat. I'm using bavette or flank steak here, something that's gonna break down low and slow while this cooks out in the oven and leaves you with super tender meat. Now that this is seasoned, I'm gonna get the pot on a nice high temperature with a little touch of oil and we're gonna brown these in batches until we have a really rich golden color on all sides. Now, the reason I'm browning these in batches, and it is an important step, is to ensure that we get that gorgeous, rich, golden brown color on the exterior. If you put everything in and brown it all off at the same time, you're not gonna get all that great base flavor to this pot, to this stew, and to the overall finish of this dish. So take your time, do it in batches, and you'll get the best results. Just look at that. Before we even stew it down, you've got serious color and flavor on the outside of that meat. And this is why using a cheaper cut like a flank steak is gonna give you really great flavor in the long run with this dish because it's slowly gonna braise out any of that sinew, that muscle, that fat, and leave you with really delicious results. So now that we have that cooked off, it's straight back into the pot with some onions, some carrots, and some garlic. Once the carrot and onion is in there and starting to sweat down, it's time to get in there with the garlic. Again, it's about building the aromatics in a dish like this. You've got all that great meatiness in the base, then you're adding the sweetness of the carrots and the onion and the garlic is adding great flavor. So now it's bringing it to the next stage of this recipe. The garlic will soften down. I'm gonna add a few thyme sprigs, but really what I want to do at this point is deglaze the pan with a little touch of red wine. Now at this point, when you've added that red wine, take your time to reduce it down and intensify the flavor. I'm using a full bodied red wine. Something like a Pinot Noir is gonna add really great flavor to a dish like this. And once it has reduced down, we're gonna get in there with our beef stock, return the beef to the pan, and slowly cook it at 160 degrees Celsius in the oven for about two and a half hours, leaving the oven to do all the hard work for us. Now, if you don't wanna use red wine, by all means, just leave it out here and just double up on the beef stock. That's the way to go. And Pretty much you'll be left with something super tender and super flavorful. So in with the beef stock and let's get cracking. Now, 
Now at this point, the stew has had about two hours cooking time. It's slowly blipping away in the oven and it's doing all the work by itself. But this is the perfect time to prepare the dumplings. Now these are cheddar and herb dumplings and they're super easy to make. All I'm gonna do is combine some butter and some flour and rub it through my fingertips until I have a sort of a texture of rough sand. Then it's time to get in there with some milk to bind it and plenty of flavor from some cheddar cheese and some herbs. This is a gorgeous way to finish any stew and it's one that you can come back to time and time again. Now that we have our dumplings looking ready to rock, it's time to get the meat out of the oven, pop these dumplings in on top and get them straight back in to puff up and be beautifully golden. Once you've shredded up that meat, this stew is pretty much good to go. And you could serve it at this point over mashed potato or polenta would be delicious. But a lovely finishing touch is these herby cheddar dumplings, which I'm just gonna place in on top. We're gonna cook it covered with the lid on for about 30 minutes and then take off the lid, leave it to cook with that direct heat. And then you have a gorgeous stew that can be brought straight to the table to dive in. So dumplings on and let's get into the oven. The beef stew has had the time in the oven and this is the moment of glory. So when you open that oven, you've taken off the lid and you get left with the most glorious beef stew topped with cheddar dumplings, bubbling, sizzling, all the good things that are happening right now and it smells absolutely fantastic. So all I'm gonna do at this point is dive in there with a spoon, serve some up and let's get tasting. moment of truth. Just look at that. A steaming bowl of comfort. Beautiful tender meat and that really light and fluffy dumpling. Let's dive in. Wow. That is just instant comfort food. Everything about it is just super tender and warm. The moment you dive into the meat, you just get this lovely, luscious, decadent flavor that's really rich and indulgent. And then on top of that, these light, fluffy, herby, buttery dumplings that just leave you with a plate that needs no more. You could sprinkle with a bit of sea salt and black pepper, but to be honest, that is good to go. And it is such a simple little recipe. If you wanna try it, as always, I'll leave it in the box below. You can check it out over on my website. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for lots more delicious winter comfort food just like this one. And of course, leave me a comment letting me know if you're gonna give this one a go. It's an absolute showstopper, an absolute winner. So I hope you do try it. Until then, I'm off to enjoy the rest of this, so I'll see you soon.